Hi, I'm Adam Zamboy and welcome to my video guide for clearing the quarry lost sector. I'm going to be trying for the master uh, flawless version of this. You will see it is down here in the EDZ, top left hand corner in the sunken isles, quite close to the spawn point. There is the quarry. You'll be facing barrier and unstoppable champions. Uh, so we'll need to make sure we've got the kit for that. Uh, the burn is void. so. I make sure that your power weapon is void. I'm also using a void energy weapon. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Shields are solar and void too, and the modifier is scorched earth, which means that the enemies will be lobbing grenades at you more frequently. So if we look at my loadout here, I'm going to be using solar. I'm using a Titan because the healing kit is really good for, uh, for at least for this season, Season of the Haunted. Uh, I, the, the super doesn't really matter, burning maul, it's a small area, so burning maul works quite well if you do cast your super. I'm using the rally barricade, uh, strafe lift, lift, and the barricade, neither of them are really important. Find the throwing hammer is useful because obviously you can go and pick it up and you can use it with uh, some of the uh, mods that I'm using to get an instant heal with. A thermite grenade. If you're running this on another character, you might consider running a healing grenade. There is some uh, void damage in here that can uh, can can really hurt. So having an additional he additional healing option can be very useful. Otherwise, I'm using the thermite grenade because there's also some areas where that that comes. I find that comes in in real handy. I'm using Sol Invictus for the sunspots. Uh, sunspots with the restoration. That's where I get my healing from in here. And roaring flames. I don't take advantage of this too much, but it's uh, it's a useful thing to have if you do start using your bonk hammer. Fragments, some of these are really, really key, but I like having Ember of Eruption for the uh, increased area effect for ignitions. I like Ember of Char, again, ignition spreading scorch to other targets. Um, the Ember of Combustion, I'm not, don't think I'm going to be using my Solar Super in here much, but if I do, causing them to ignite is quite handy. And finally, Ember of Torches, like this will make me radiant if I do use my Bonk Hammer. Always handy being radiant for the additional bonus, um, bonus damage. Neither Combustion nor Torches are essential. If you've got others that you prefer using, then by all means do that. Right, weapons, I'm using Arbalest. Any um, any match game, anything that involves barrier champions, Arbalest is 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 pretty much top of the tree. You can get it from the exotic kiosk in the tower. Uh, I'd recommend if you're if you're buying stuff, it's one of the first things you pick up if you're planning to do end game content. Uh, I've got a pointed inquiry. This is void. It's a scout rifle. So this season that handles the unstoppable champions. If you are shaping this yourself rather than waiting for one to drop. Craft one with uh, adaptive munitions. That's, I would say, that's an almost must-have for uh, for doing any end-game activity that involves match game. This will allow you to force a shield much more easily. Uh, that's not of the energy type than than it would be otherwise. You can get probably clear a shield in four or five shots. Whereas if you were using a different energy type, you might be shooting at it at a shield for. <laughs> for for ages and they do regenerate quite quickly so i'm using a red herring again it's void this isn't ideal for this i would say uh, it's got lasting impression which provides 25 percent additional damage that's before you add the burn damage for the, for the activity um, but the, there's a delay on the explosion and if you're using this against champions then the delay is usually after the stun wears off so uh, your unstoppable uh, champion will have its damage resistance back up. The barrier champion is very likely to have its shield up at the moment at which the, the second the delayed explosion goes off. Uh, I'm not going to be using them for champions in here because of a couple of mods I've got on my class item. Uh, I am going to be using this against the boss, so I'm going to take advantage of that additional damage. Right, helmet, uh, Lawley Splendor Helm. You should have been able to get this from the, if you were playing in the Witch Queen, this was one of the, the, the exotics that dropped from the Witch Queen when you finished it that you got from Akora. Um, 
I'm going to be using it with uh, the ammo finder. You see, I've got elemental ordnance, so I will be able to pick. Or I will be able to create uh, solar wells when uh, when I'm getting kills with my grenades. I have here the unstoppable scout rifle. The Arbalist has an intrinsic anti-barrier, so I don't need an anti-barrier mod. So I'm using the second slot there for a scout rifle loader. It always helps to have faster reloads. On the chest, I've got the resists, uh, and I'm uh, also using on the chest Font of Might. Again, when I'm picking up wells, uh, having additional damage is never a bad thing. So uh, I've got the energy to spare on there, so that's on the chest. On the legs, I've got the scavengers, and I've got melee wellmaker. Again, that means if I'm using my bonk hammer and I get a kill, I'm going to get um, I'm going to get a solar well as a result of that. You'll notice that with the, uh, the the stats I've got, I have specs heavily into resilience, so I want to get to a hundred resilience. I'd suggest you do the same, and then split the rest uh, between the other the other stats. I've got a fairly high. Uh, discipline here but again it's your, your your choice as to which one you find more useful class item probably where the most interesting and useful stuff is on here i have well of life which means that if i pick up a solar well i will get regeneration for a short period of time that's very useful if i'm in a crowd it's less less important here but there are lost sectors where that can be really really useful and and just using the bonk hammer in a crowded area and being able to get a well which then um, proxy regeneration every single time can be really really handy the other two which are pretty much must-haves i think when you're dealing with champions solar fulmination and revitalizing blast so revitalizing blast stuns a champion causes it to ignite and and causes it to explode as well and then solar fulmination will then uh, cause that to throw the damage out to everything in a, in a nearby radius very very handy again with champions can can clear any ads near a champion without you having to fire a single shot so can can help clear rooms quite quickly and between the two of them uh, if you're lucky and you get the timing right if you've got two champions next to each other each one can cause can can scorch each other and and you can start chaining ignitions to to, to clear them so that that particular kit of three mods there is is really useful those have been on my uh on my class on my class item on my titan pretty much constantly this season while i've been doing the clears for the lost sectors so there we go that's the loadout uh so off we go edz sunken isles Now, if you're doing any of these lost sectors, I'd always suggest you do the first run through on Legend just to get a feel for them, where they're where the ads and the champions appear. It'll be slightly easier. Um, and there's also a separate triumph for running it through on Legend, which you don't get if you complete it on Master only. Okay, so there's basically only kind of two major rooms for this, maybe two rooms and a kind of a sub room off to the side. So you'll have a few ads in front of you and then you'll also see there the unstoppable champion starts to walk up the little path there. You can see the chunk damage that my mods on my class item are doing here. So you're getting that explosion, then you're getting burn damage afterwards. So a little bit of tick damage. 
Not very aggressive this one, won't unless you, you run up there. Won't run up the path towards you uh, to where you spawn. There we go, that's clear that. That scion had been a little bit closer, would have cleared the sign as well. Right, at the far end of this room, although might have moved, you will find a barrier champion. But there's also some trash mobs. You can see the barrier champion has just jumped down there on the right hand side. So there's some dogs there. I'm going to wait now. Um, don't want to have to deal with a dog at the same time. Dogs charge up the. This is why the thermite grenade is quite useful here because they will all charge up in a straight line towards you. Alright, I'm going to just try and get a little bit of chunk damage on him until he puts his shield up. No, not yet. There we go. Right, so. There we go. Now, I'm not sure whether the. Whether the solar fulmination stuns him a little longer, but usually by the time he comes out of his stun animation, he's just ready to go back into his next shield. So as long as you you're ready with the arbalest, you should be able to I say three, oh, that was yeah, three shield um, breaks and and he's done. But right, I'm going to finish off with these other ads. Right after you've cleared these ads. Move down, I don't think there's anything left here. And as you push forward a little bit, you will see a couple of phalanxes and a legion, legionary. So always useful to have uh, anti-barrier here so that you can still hit them through the shield. I know I've got special ammo here so I can afford to do that. Right, the next room, small room, will have a barrier champion on the right with some trash ads so, the barrier champion is on, up on a ledge just up and to the right so I'm going to try and encourage it to there we go he's jumped down get out the way of the blinding grenades right get the stun Ready for the next. I don't get him this time, then definitely the next shield break will get him, but got that right. As you push forward into here, there will be an unstoppable and a a gladiator, one of the, the butchers. So that's quite handy. You try and get the the stun on the unstoppable and that will then cause a fair bit of damage to the to the gladiator so you don't have to worry other than that then you've always got your grenade it's a straight line path that he will be taking to you so the grenade will do good work there right i'm going to back up here i mean to be honest you could do a finisher here right make a note here there's heavy back here now this is the kind of the only pinch point really is the difficulty getting in and out of the boss area if you're, if you're trying to play it safe then it makes it a little easy a little difficult rather to, to to back back out because all you've got is this and you've got to crouch to get through it but yeah your initial initially there'll be three scions here which you can usually get from spawn or not from spawn from this entrance if you miss one of them, they they will kind of head up here and take a position around there. Well, I'm going to use this rock now as to set up a uh, base of operations. When I move up to it, the um, boss will spawn in with a couple of nightmares and a barrier champion will appear up here on this kind of platform up above. I'm going to shoot the explosive barrel, try and get some chunk damage, make him put his shield up, and I will then... Uh, clear the clear the barrier champion immediately after the barrier champion is killed then another barrier champion will appear i will try and do the same to that one and then i will start um, working on the ads that are down here now hopefully this 
uh, this, this rock will protect me from any, any fire from over here. It's a little awkward to get up. There's a kind of a step here, which uh, sometimes you can't step over. So you might try need to do a little jump if you need to get to the other side of the rock. Um, you'll probably see that as, our, as the encounter unfolds. But from here, so I'm just going to go forward and spawn the adds. There we go. There we go, first. Yeah, if you're a bit faster than I am, you will be able to get rid of that. Uh, the ad that drops down, it's only a red bar. Alright, there we go. And that's the end of the first barrier. If you're lucky, then the other one will come out and have some burn damage already going. There we go. And you can see while I'm doing this, I'm not suffering any fire by any of the ads that I know are down there and to my right, a bit more heavy. So I'm now going to do the ads to the, to the right. Going to start that off with, always like to lob a grenade down there. Do some good damage. You can see that the uh, oh. you can see the scout rifle is doing some good damage. Lawley helm, take advantage of the lawley helm. We'll regeneration for a couple of seconds until that's finished. Right, I'm not going to do anything with the boss yet. I want to get these two adds down, but when I do, when he jumps up like that, that can be really handy, uh, because he's obviously still, so although my rockets, oh. I can't remember whether mine rockets do have tracking on them, but that makes that much easier. You can see this is where you might be using a healing grenade. That Bronto cannon that the boss has really hurts. So, right, I'm going to take the shield off. You can see how quickly that comes off with adaptive munitions. If I had a normal void scout rifle, that would be taking ages to clear. So, hopefully, he will go up when he when he goes up. I will clear it hopefully with a uh, an arbalist shot and then get a rocket on him. If you don't have arbalist, you could always use a pulse rifle this season. One with osmosis will give you the ability to break solar shields as well as dealing with barrier champions. He'll hide back there until his shield's regenerated. There we go. Let's see, it does some decent damage right. That will spawn my next round of ads. Slide back in here. There are two... Unstoppables. We will initially walk up here, but may take up residence on the right. So this isn't a bad place to, to try and... Because if they can get line of sight on you, they will probably try and kill you from there, right? You can see I've got a couple of red bars to the side. And I think that's it for the moment. So we'll concentrate on the boss again. Next time, the next damage check, I suppose you'd call it, with the boss, we will get a couple more um, of the nightmare, uh, nightmare Cabal that turn up. They can be a bit annoying because they do seem to be a. They've got their kind of those little mini grenade launchers, and they seem to be a lot more aggressive with them than the first pair. So they will be firing a lot. That might be the point actually at which I will use my super because I want I want to clear those 
quickly because that then leaves the the boss alone. Right, let's make sure everything is reloaded. Yep, there we go. A lot of the runs I was doing with this, I suddenly, when I came to do boss damage, suddenly realised that I had no... Uh, nothing in the tube when I wanted to fire my rocket launcher, so it's I've become slightly better at... double-checking. So I'm having to jump up, because if I try and step up here... Uh, see, my problem was there was I was too close to the back so that the I was getting damaged by, you can see you're in a fairly enclosed space there, by area of effect damage. So they can cut the uh, two nightmares can come round here as well, so always worth. You don't have any radar. That's all worth, always worth a little bit of a check. That's one of them down. I don't know if the other one is already dead. I might have got him with a grenade. Oh no, there he is. Didn't hit him with a grenade earlier, so let's try him again. Ah, here he comes. They will occasionally try that. If they do, that's what your bonk hammer's for. Right, so I think that's it for the ads. So we can now take our time. You could have a go with your super, but if you're going for the flawless, generally I take the... Uh, I'm of the opinion that you stay as far away as possible and, and just chip away at damage uh, rather than YOLOing it and, and risking, a, risking a death. So when you get him to probably that last damage bar you can see in his health bar, he will retreat up the stairs for his, I suppose, the last stand. Not really a last stand, it just means he, that last bit he's repositioning for. So you can see, there you go, he's heading to the back. He's probably got little enough health that you could use your super on him here. Even though it's not a, uh, a solar burn. Yeah, if you remove his shield, he will generally back off and and there we go. Done and done. So pretty simple. Uh, as I say, the, the the main problem that I found when I was doing this earlier was just this gap here. If I wanted to retreat and just get, get some breathing room, if there were things that were pushing me while I was standing here, if something suddenly appeared to my right, it was much more difficult to get back here into this room uh, for a little bit of breathing space. That's why I think focus on uh, focus on healing rather than damage output with the grenades if you are running anything else other than the Titan. Maybe uh, if you, well, no, actually, you know, I, you, you, you've got your healing rift as a, as a, as a warlock, but healing grenades are, are instant. I would strongly ru recommend running the healing grenades with the, uh, with a hunter. But there we go. There's the run. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I got through it when I was doing it earlier, probably on my second attempt. Um, uh, my, my, where I did mess up there was, was trying to get back out and just basically standing and, and dying uh, when I was trying to escape the room to, to recover. So I hope your run goes smoothly and may all your drops be god rolls. <laughs>